Hey, y'all, Shane Sams here. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. Man, I've got a good one for you today. Now, you know, every single week right here on the Shane Sam show, I talk to all kinds of influencers and authors and experts and entrepreneurs. Now, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. But this one actually is a real member from my community over at FlipLifestyle.com. I have a community where I help people start, build and grow online businesses. And we see all kinds of success stories. But this one takes the cake. During the pandemic, I met a guy named Terry Dunlap, and he actually came on my other podcast, the Flip Lifestyle Podcast, and I just coached him up on his company. Over on Flip Lifestyle, I like to help people start, build, or even grow their online business. We do it live so everybody can listen in. Terry was no different. We talked about pricing. We talked about restructuring his tiers, restructuring his products. He was losing customers in a high-ticket SaaS product. So we really hashed that out. We worked it out, and he then went after that interview, and he applied all of the changes that we talked about. Well, over the last year, his company exploded. He used free trials on high ticket subscriptions. He created some new market segments and went after new business owners. And he started making noise in the marketplace. And guess what happened? Word got back to Microsoft. They approached him to see what he was doing. And Terry just sold his company to Microsoft for $20 million plus dollars. That's right, y'all. $20 million. He just sold his company. Terry used his online business to survive the pandemic. He actually was doing a lot of live events and some live trainings uh, in corporate offices. Transitioned to online, transitioned to software as a service, transitioned to teaching on the internet. And that led to a $20 million sale. Not just that, he actually had another company and Microsoft made him sell it too to close the deal. So he did another however many million dollars sale uh, with his second company. So I thought this would be an amazing, amazing conversation to air right here on the Shane Sam Show. I hope that it inspires you of what's possible online. Whether it's a small membership, Joss and I sold a small membership on a contract for over a million dollars, or even developing out an online business that can sell for eight figures, $20 $20 million to Microsoft. This is an incredible story of perseverance, of taking action, changing lives, and putting something amazing out into the world. Oh, yeah. One more thing. This entire story with Terry started when he was 17 years old and he got arrested for credit card fraud. So <laughs> this is, I'm telling you, we're going to start at the beginning. We're going to work to the end. And I know you are going to be inspired uh, with what's possible on today's Shane Sam show. So wherever you are, grab a notebook and a pen, sit back, pour yourself a coffee, maybe a little bit of sweet tea, take some notes. You're going to learn a lot. I know I did. Enjoy the show. Three, two, one, Terry Dunlap. What's up, Terry? Dude, it's been a while, but hey, before we even get started, do we need to preface this and reference the prior interview where I talk about yes. my arrest as a computer hacker? We, we definitely need. Yes, we probably should tell everybody a little bit about. Well, hold on. Let, let's talk. Let, let me let's just let's just give them the little we'll give them the little like the trailer of the movie here real quick. Okay. So just tell everybody what you did with your company over the last little bit. And then we'll go back and we'll tell them what you did about your hacker community. And then we'll start talking about everything, but tell them, tell them what, what we're leading to right now. What just happened in your life? I just sold my company to Microsoft for an excess of $20 million. <laughs> and wrecks happened all over the country. as people were <laughs> listening to this on their commute, on the way to school, on the way to school, on the way to whatever, man. Uh, all right. So we're not going to tell you what it is yet. Get a, you should be paying attention, but look, all right, now let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to when you were a hacker. We'll give the, the, uh, the briefest version of that story. Maybe we'll zoom yes. forward, talk about what the company looked like and, you yeah. know, how we got to talk with each other and then what led to this, man. It's amazing. So, yeah. So this is a quick recap. I'm assuming you'll link to the uh, the full prior episode in the show now. 100%. So people want to go back yeah, and listen be in the to it. Show. So the, the, the Cliff Note version, if, you're, if people remember what Cliff Notes are, is in 1985, at 17 years old, I was uh, arrested for computer hacking. Actually, it was really credit card fraud because there were no no laws on the books at the time until the following year. And I used a Commodore 64 and a 300 baud dial-up modem. Got into all kinds of mischief and problems. Go back to the prior episode to, to really, I unload the whole unpack. Well, we went through the whole thing. It's, it's like, it's like yeah. catch me if you can, fascinating type stuff here, you know? <laughs> <It is. laughs> so, you know, the, so 
you know, many, many years later after that, I ended up getting a top secret clearance to work with the U.S. National Security Agency. So depending on your politics and what you read in the news, the NSA is good. The NSA is bad. That's up to you to decide. Regardless, I worked there during the war on terror. I used my hacking skills to help U.S. special forces and the intelligence agencies go out and tag, track and locate these terrorist targets so they can take them out. That's what I did with my computer skills. Now, specifically how we did that, we focused on what's called embedded firmware, basically what we know today as IoT devices. So everything from your wireless router to your phone to your, you know, Nest thermostat to even your vehicles, they all have embedded firmware. Basically, it's an operating system at a very, very micro level. We got really good at hacking that stuff. So that's what we did at the NSA. But I got kind of bored there kind of disillusioned with with the politics and started my first company, which was an offensive cyber hacking company catering to the U.S. government. So now what that means is what that means is you would find weaknesses in people's systems, the offensive Mm -hmm. hacking. Like so they would hire you to say, hey, you hack us before the other hackers do so that we know where the back doors are and we'll fix them before they ever get here, basically. Almost right. So it's like we have a target in Russia. Okay. And this is what this is the device that the target uses. Okay. We need you to find a vulnerability that can be weaponized that oh, we can I use see. to attack that device. I see. Like they know they've got it, so you figure out how to get to it basically. So it's in reverse. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the the offensive part. So it, it, can I just that say com- that you are the coolest guy I've ever met in my life, by the way? <laughs> I mean, we I mean we, well, you got this beautiful mane of hair and you're hacking <laughs> Russians. I mean, this is incredible, Terry. I'm already all in with whatever you're selling. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, man. All right, carry so, on. <laughs> carry on, my friend. <laughs> so, so we got really good at this. And you know, the 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 NSA and the other intelligence agencies wanted us to come work for them. And we're only a small team of people. It's like, we we can't be everywhere all the time. So why don't your people come to us and we'll train them to do what we do. And so we started developing these training classes live and in person. And this, and, is, the, this is the first push toward, oh, we'll build a membership, we'll build a community yeah. around these courses, all of those things that end up. Now, and here's here's the one thing I want I want to tell everybody right now. From the time I was arrested, to the time I sold to Microsoft, none of this was planned, okay? I didn't start out hacking at 17 with the intent to sell some future company to Microsoft, okay? <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. You Stuff know what just happens. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. So we started developing these training programs and we would bring people in live. And it was c- catered primarily to military and intelligence agencies. But I mean, even those people talk. And before you know it, we're getting people in from commercial industry, AT&T, Ford, General Motors, Verizon. Uh, I mean, you name the company, we probably trained one or two people from that company, General Electric of all people. And I even asked them, I said, what, what are you, what is General Electric doing that, that you need to understand how we hack things? And they have a plant, I guess, in Kentucky where they actually manufacture internet connected, I believe, refrigerators. Really? <laughs> And so, and so they wanted to understand how the hacker mindset works and what they look for to better build oh, yeah. internet-connected appliances. Well, they, they've got – that's probably true because they. Uh, we I just bought a refrigerator like last year because one of ours went out. And they we found a refrigerator. We almost got it. I didn't though because it was a little freaky where you could scan stuff going in and your refrigerator would tell you – when it went bad or if it was time to buy something new or if you were like about to run out, like it had a, like some of the things like weighed it as it laid down and it could recognize as the gallon of milk was like going away. So like, yeah, I mean, I guess that's exactly what they were trying to protect. basically. Yeah. And all that stuff is run, you know, the brains that, that, that operate that, that give you that, that cool ability is, is basically called firmware hmm. and they have to get updates periodically from, you know, the mothership and it's, I'm, it's probably connected to your internet at home somehow, somewhere is, wow. is my guess. But anyway, the bottom line is we started developing these classes, not only for government intelligence agencies, but then also for commercial industry. Were those in-person classes or yes. all online? So, these are all okay. so you're going classes. in person and you're teaching yep. these things and you're doing this stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, so along with the teaching, we're taking this what we know to do by hand in terms of reverse engineering these firmware images and turning them into weapons for the government, 
we're automating this process very slowly as much as we can over it ends up being like maybe 10 years that we automate this process. So keep in mind here, we got two things going on. We got this automated platform that identifies vulnerabilities in IoT devices and helps us weaponize them. That's track one. Track two is we're trying to train more people like us because yeah. there's a short supply of this type of you know, skill set. So we have the training track over here that is that is doing phenomenally well. Uh, this is this is crazy because like it's funny it's funny how what we what we call it the flip lifestyle blueprint and of course you've made these courses before that but like this pattern that i see in almost every single online training teaching style of business is um, you develop these skills <laughs> through some nefarious means or not, but you have this skill set that you go, you get right somewhere. You take that skill set and you kind of apply it into a different way. And then you realize that other people want to learn this skill set. So you exactly. start teaching this skill set either in live classes or online or like through a membership community. And all of a sudden, you've taken this God-given knowledge and wisdom that you've accumulated and you've made it into a product that can be consumed by anyone, anywhere, at any time. And like that, that to me, what you're saying, like I, people are like computer hacking, this, that, and the other. Like, look, I just talked to a guy who just quit his job and he teaches people how to play guitar. It's the same thing. He just, yeah. he had this skill set. He was sitting around and taught himself how to play guitar. He put it into these trainings and these modules and these courses. And then he gets it in front of people and he sees other people learn how to play guitar. And then wouldn't you know it, they start telling other people that he knows how to play uh, guitar. This is the, the, the tried and true pattern uh, of how to become uh, an influencer, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. And um, yeah, now you got to remember this is, there was no intent here when I developed these, or I, I didn't develop them all. I developed one of the classes that my employees came up with ideas for additional classes. Right. But you're the, so you're, you I, led the charge. You're, you got the bayonet, yeah, yeah. man. Let's, That's like, right. let's, let's, let's get out there and let's start, let's start training these people, man, because you know, there's not a lot of people like us out there. Let's, let's train the workforce and, and maybe, you know, good things will happen. So again, keep in mind that on the training side, there was no discussion with anybody about doing online training or anything like that at this sure. point. So, what we started to notice over time, and I'm sure many of, of the people in the community noticed this too, is that we start to get inquiries from overseas. Now, remember, ours are live and in person. So we actually have people flying in from Denmark and London and Japan and Australia and Malaysia to take our classes. But obviously, there's, there's, there's a, a group of people that just can't afford the trip. I mean, right. these aren't cheap classes. These are classes that are like twenty five hundred, three thirty two hundred dollars a pop for like a five day. And just intensive. the time involved of getting to yes. this out of the planet is crazy. Yes, you know? exactly. So I started to recognize there is a whole pocket, a, a whole community out there that 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 wants to take the class, that is willing to pay for the class, but is having problems with travel because they can't afford the expense of travel. So I said to some of the instructors, I said. What do you think about doing some of this stuff online? Mm -hmm. And of course, we talked about, oh, you know, people are going to steal it and then repost it on YouTube. Because remember, in a lot of cases, we're dealing with hackers like ourselves. Some of them aren't as, you know, ethical as others. But, you know, so we have seen cases where other people's trainings have ended up on the Internet for free. And it's like, yeah, we can't have that happen. So what we ended up doing was, OK, how do we tie the training so that, that make it in such a way online that even if somebody got it illegally or posted it on YouTube, it really wouldn't be as valuable as the live in-person class. And that's when we came up with these hardware kits, because in order to take our class, we live, we would have all the hardware, all the computers, all the IoT devices. A, a thing for in. people to hack, basically. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we had all that stuff there. And it's like, if we're going to do this online, we're going to have to ship this equipment to people. So we had to bake in the cost of actually maintaining a physical inventory of these boxes of all these devices and wires and stuff that we would have to send people. So I felt a little more comfortable that if we put this online and somebody steals it and reposts it, it's not going to be as effective because we have probably 25, 30 labs in just one class. To, to, to make sure you understand what you're doing and to get the real yeah. benefit of is using the equipment. That, that's a, so that's a good, that, that's another good lesson there too, is like, you know, the content 
you like we oh, the first thing I ever sold was lesson plans to teachers. Well, I hate to tell you this, but if you downloaded all the plans, you had a bunch of PDFs that were all of our lesson plans and they could have just gave those to their friends. You know what I mean? But yeah. you have th- there is a layer. You got to add layers to it in some way that do make it more valuable than just a copycat. Like for a lot of people, it's just better service. Um, for some people, mm-hmm. it's a physical component. But like that's a really good lesson is just like, the content is content. Con- someone can steal your content, guys. I hate to tell you this. Hit record, repost, right? But if you add some exactly. layer to it, it makes it infinitely more valuable and people love you for it because you're the original. So great stuff. And, 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 the, and the thing is about our content, our content is not proprietary or unique. Anybody can go out there, download a bunch of books and learn all this stuff on their own and turn around and record their own type of, of mm-hmm. uh, you know, hacking class. So it, it's, it's nothing proprietary to us. It's just the way that we package, deliver it, uh, the way the slides are presented, the labs are created, the way that the, the, the uh, instructors kind of deliver the material. And then it's we the, set yeah, up man, it's the, it's the branding. It's the relationship through that, all that. That people yes. like your stuff, and you, and that's why nobody can be knocked off if you yeah. do it right, because you're doing it your way, right? And if you do it your way better, nobody can beat you. Exactly, yeah, absolutely man. correct. As soon as we had the first class done, we were getting ready. I was actually getting ready to upload everything to Kajabi. I was planning out the the uh, the layout and all that kind of stuff. COVID hit. Oh man. So, COVID so, hit. so all your live classes were about to get shut down, son. Gone, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Now, here's 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 here's. Let me put put that in perspective. Put that on pause for a second. Let me go back to our automated platform that we were building. So, let me back up to 2017. We had the platform completed. We were using it for our customers. I went to uh, a conference that was designed for intelligence community people and investors, and I showcased this particular platform. And we were cornered by investors just before we left. And they said, have you ever thought about using this automated platform to help companies protect people against people like you over in foreign countries? Mm. So instead of you going after the foreign adversaries of the U S how about you help U S companies and others protect their stuff from the Russians, the Iranians, the North Koreans by showing them where the vulnerabilities are. So when they sell their product, when they come to market with it, it's more secure than it would have been. Yeah. And I had no interest in that because I mean, obviously I'm biased on the offensive side. If I'm going to hack somebody, I only have to be right one time. Right. If you're going to defend yourself against me, you have to be right every time. Yeah. And I don't like those odds. Right. But money talks. Let's right. let's get real. Right. So <laughs> yeah. I can't solve so, the whole problem, but let's see if we can get 98 percent of it. And I'll just go. Yeah. yeah. So so the investors painted this great picture of how how much money we could make if we actually, you know, use this platform, let's say, for good and help manufacturers and developers create more secure products. So we took the bait and we said, OK, you're not buying our existing company, we'll create a brand new company, call it Refirm Labs for reverse engineering firmware, Refirm. And we will take the core team and and the technology and spin that out of this existing company and create Refirm Labs. And you investors can put in $1.5 million to get it off the ground. And then we will own, me and my partner will own both companies. Yeah. And they said, okay, fine, let's do that. So I'm running two companies now. One's, you know, the training and the government spooky stuff, and now this commercial-facing company that is now starting to work with companies like AT&T, Verizon, Netgear, Charter Communications. This is is the training company, right? That's training all these people. This is this is the new product company. Oh, okay, I got you. This is the one that to help these companies defend themselves is what yeah. this one is. And now the a lot of those one, customers, yeah. yeah, a lot of those customers actually were in our original training classes in gotcha. company A, the first company. So they knew what our skill set was, and they're like, "Oh my God, we don't have to do this stuff by hand anymore." They got this other company that does it automatically for us. That's even better. Let's buy that instead of waste our time trying to do this stuff by hand. So it was it was great. So that company was moving along. And then you and I talked about during the, 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 the COVID situation, you know, 
we're, le- we're leaving money on the table because even though the classes were online with these hardware components that we would ship to people, we still charge the exact same price as we would in person right. simply because you get the same education, the same outcome. Everything's the same. It's like, here's the kicker. You as the student being the online student, you actually get to keep the equipment. Yeah. Right. Whereas if you were a live person, I mean, you're not walking out the door with our equipment. We have to reuse it for the next class. So I realized we were leaving money on the table again because they couldn't afford all of the equipment that was even still low. It was bundled into the price. Some people would say, well, I already have some of the components. I just need to buy this. Can I? So you and I sat down and we came up with all these different scenarios about repricing and structuring and being able to maybe, you know, do like payment plans, send it out, and what would happen if they don't if they canceled their credit card before yep. we got full payment? So we worked through that whole scenario. You can go back to that prior episode and, and talk and hear how what Shane and I worked out. So I worked on that for a while, but I took that same mentality over to Refirm Labs, the new company, because here we are now with a subscription product that's in the cloud that our corporate customers are subscribing to, and we're selling it for seventy two thousand dollars per year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. However, some companies obviously didn't know our background, didn't know who we were, and we wanted to separate the government spooky stuff from this commercial public facing stuff, and we didn't want to mix the two. So they were reluctant to fork over seventy two thousand for a subscription to something in the cloud that evaluates the security of their stuff as an unknown. Uh, we give trials here and there. Sometimes it worked. In our favor, sometimes it didn't. You know, we debrief the customer, figure out what's going on. And then I remembered, it's like, you know, some of the companies that talk to us don't need the full capability of what we have. Oh, I see. Yep. They only need this part or maybe part A plus part C, but they don't need part B. I wonder if we could bundle this differently. Ah, tiers and bundles and new packages and everything so that was the it's funny how isn't it funny how it's all related you know what i'm saying yes. like you're, you're like as you, if you just keep that that's why masterminds and conversations like that are so important because you're just trying to like even ideas in the one company or the one tier or the one platform apply to the others and you see it in a different way and it, all of a sudden you create a whole new segment or a whole new market or a whole new group of customers uh, from yep. just conversations like that. So you went to these people and you looked at, and you showed them different bundles, different situations where they just yeah, got so what, what they So what we needed. did is we basically we basically took the same product and broke it up into three different buckets. Now, we have a free open source version of the platform. Okay. Anybody today can go out, download it, unpack it, require some skill. If you're not computer savvy, you have to understand Linux and the command line and compiling code and all that kind of BS, but it's free. Yeah. It won't give you won't will not give you the same output and results as our enterprise product, but you, you get some value out of it. So a lot of people will will play with the free version. Then we realize that there is a a a group of companies out there that you know they're not the Fortune 500. They're kind of small, medium sized businesses that might have teams of ten or maybe even five people working on a particular project. So we developed a package subscription package around that and sold it to those companies for ten thousand dollars a year oh wow what a, what a what a different mo- what a different uh that's just what a different group of people 70 to 10 right yes. i mean that, that even that when you break it down that's less than a thousand a month like yes. for some people you know so what a, what a great yeah. pitch you know yep so you have what we call the teams edition and then we okay. have the all you can eat enterprise edition that was still up there you know, right around 60,000 to 72,000. It was kind of tiered, sliced and diced, depending on what this, and those were catered to like your Fortune 500 companies and stuff. So that's, that's took your idea that was initially for tactical network solutions, the training class, and ended up applying it to my commercial facing company. And dude, I will tell you, we closed more deals under, under those, <laughs> under those, that packaging. Unbelievable, than I, man. Then I had when I was trying to sell, the all you can eat for seventy two thousand to everybody. That's unreal, man. So people just kept taking it. They, yeah, the sales, yeah. yeah, get on a sales call. I'm in. That sounds good. Let's do it. Let's go. And, yeah. and it's um, like you know they might play. They might sign up for a year for the ten thousand dollar plan, and then realize, yeah, I, w- I wish I had this capability, or I could upload more to do more. Well, let me upgrade to the enterprise 
platform. Uh, so. and, and you know what's funny is that like uh, I, all my conversations are running together, Terry. I've been podcasting since like oh, ten know. o'clock this morning. I but like, I, but, but, I, but I, I had this conversation with someone earlier, and it was this. Uh, it's so funny how these themes scale, whether it's a $10 a month or a $10,000 a month membership. Like when you, it, you, you can't put walls around your stuff. Once people see how good your stuff is, of course, they're going to upgrade. Of course, they're gonna, so this is almost like even like a, a it's not it's not a trial, but it's like, hey, you get to come in, you get to hang out in the front lobby, you get to do all these benefits, but there's more stuff in the back and they're yeah. there. They're ready to walk through the next door. So you basically just found a, a bunch of doors into what you do and they can hang out in the lobby. They can pay their 10,000 a year or they can move forward. They can pay their 70. <laughs> Same thing. If it's like, Hey, try it for seven days for $7. And then they try the $70. It's the same concept. You're just letting people yep. see uh, how awesome it is. You know, Yeah. the only difference is my numbers are a little bit bigger. Than there's the one extra, there's an extra zero or two. That's it, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's <laughs> like, software. Wow. That's amazing. Dude. So, so you so, start closing all these freaking deals. Everything starts blowing up and going crazy. And then, and then we get the, we grab the attention of Microsoft. Ah, man. So let me let me kind of give you the the thirty thousand foot view of where Microsoft wants to go. Microsoft wants to become a security company. Okay. They want to become a cloud based security company. So sure, sure, they still sell Windows and all that kind of stuff, but to them, the cloud is where the money is. Yeah. And if they if they can be the premier security company. That's even, you know, icing on the cake because you have companies connected to the Microsoft cloud, all this network traffic and telemetry going back and forth that Microsoft has access to. So it should make it easier for them to identify threats and to react to security situations almost instantaneously. So they wanted to become a huge player in this IoT world by protecting IoT devices. So they're very well, I should say they're first, but one of their larger acquisitions was an Israeli company called CyberX. These guys can actually go into an enterprise, a Fortune 500 company, scan the company network and quickly identify all the IoT devices on the network, which is fantastic because some customers we lost because we did not have that capability. Mm. We could tell you what's wrong with your IoT device, whether it's your webcams or your conference phones or your Wi-Fi routers or printers, but you have to tell us first where they are and supply us the firmware. Gotcha. So, so you have... Uh, Microsoft bought this company that can scan for these devices. They said, okay, well, we can scan for these devices and we can we can see attacks as they're happening and react, but we want to be preventative. Hmm, what company out there can help protect on a preventative basis these IoT devices? And so they yeah. did their research, and one of the names that top topped the list was Refirm Labs. And, so, and what, what's this, this is another thing uh, I was telling again, I was telling somebody earlier today. Action begets action. Success begets success. If you just keep stirring the waters, that's how you get found and noticed. And like, so you're stirring these waters, you're doing these trainings, people out there start knowing who you are. You have this other company start doing that. And then just these segment changes, these bundle changes, these pricing changes, more people are coming in that creates buzz so that when you are in the right place, you already put yourself in the right place to be at the right place in the right time. You know what I mean? And, and then dude, Microsoft I'm telling finds you, you dude. Not, again, I, I can't emphasize enough how, how all of this just kind of happened. <laughs> well, I, I don't, I, I, you're going to be humble. I'm not going to let you be humble. Listen, no, the reason it happened is because you kept making the next decision. You didn't try to make the best decision. You just took your, everything up to that point. And you go, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And you gave yourself that chance for it, brother. So, yeah, it did true. just keep happening. But, man, you kept moving the ball forward. That's why it happened, yes. dude. It's amazing. Yes. So we get identified by Microsoft. Microsoft uh, approaches us. We think they're, they're interacting with us to become a customer because we were giving them free trials. And then it gets to the point where they want to have more deep dive meetings and adding more people to their trial account, extend the trial for us, extend it for six more months. And it's like, what, what are these? Oh, I bet we're going to become a partner. We're going to become right. a Microsoft partner. That's, That's what's right. happening here. And then they wanted to meet with uh, more people of the team and started asking very uh, interesting technical questions where, I mean, we were under NDA, but when we walked away from the meeting, it was like they know enough now that they can go build this on their own and yeah, crush us for sure. like the bugs that we are. Yep. So cockroaches, as Mr. Wonderful exactly. says on Shark Tank, right? <laughs> exactly. So they, they, they approached us. Uh, I think it was um, last summer. 
and said, we, we are interested in acquiring you. I was like, holy cow. Wow. So we, so do we do this don, da, a song and dance? We do the due diligence and all that kind of stuff. And then here's the kicker. And they've, they've known, they've known from the get go when we started these really deep dive discussions that my co-founder and I own two companies, the company they want to buy and this other company that does this hacking stuff for the government, which is a government contracting company. They've known that for, for months during these talks. It was about a month and a half before we're ready to go to close. And they asked, point blank, the technologies that you guys develop over at that other class where you are at that other company where you do the training and you do the government contracting. Is it possible that some of your government customers could take that technology and target U.S. citizens? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the FBI is one of our customers. Yeah, so for sure. They're probably they're probably targeting U.S. bad people. So right. yes, blanket U.S. people. Yes, they said, well, yeah, well, we can't close this deal if you're going to be involved with that company because we can't. We have these ethics at Microsoft that you know you can't be involved in hacking, and if something were to be exposed and make the press and connected it back to you as and then they bought it from you it would go back to them basically yes yes and make them look bad so if you want to close on this 20 plus million dollar deal in a month and a half you're gonna have to sell that other company (laughs) you're like good i'll sell it to you deal (laughs) it's like that's not that's not are you trying to talk me out of it because that just sounds like cool now i'll just give you that one too for 20 million dollars let's go we tried we said hey maybe you guys might want to buy this one yeah right right right. they they just didn't want anything to do with with the hacking side of it they just deserve you know trying to become this so did you sell that to somebody else or did you just shut it down or what'd you do nope i (laughs) So I sold two companies. <laughs> wow, God, this is crazy, Terry. This is so silly, man. <laughs> this is, we did not talk that long ago, man. This is crazy. It was during the pandemic for crying out loud. Oh my God, it's yeah, amazing. Now, that one we didn't get as much for it as we wanted. We probably could have. But you were in a hurry. You kind of had to get it, rid yeah. of it. Yeah. Probably could have sold it for about fifteen million, but I mean, it was it was a fraction of that. But still, I mean, we were able to sell two companies. Bro. As, as we're that that is that is definitely one of the craziest. I, I want to stress to everybody: this is less than a year. This is happening. I don't. I, yeah. the, the pandemic was going on, and we're recording this in July. You know, and it just goes to show you how crazy life can get when you keep taking action, when you keep talking, when you keep trying new things. And uh, here's what's so funny, man: I have people that sell memberships from everything from like a thousand bucks a month to 70 bucks. A month. I mean, all sorts of stuff. And I hear you say things like, you, you know, 70,000 a year, 10,000 a year, but it's like, yeah, we tried a free trial with that kind of price. There, you're like, yeah, we, uh, we did. We tried some new bundles, some new segments, try to add a couple tiers here and there. And it's like, it's so funny how all these subscription models and these, and the business principles that we preach here are the same. It's just all the mm-hmm. same. It's just, no, get new ideas take action, try new things, let people see what you can do for free and prove it's awesome. Uh, always be open for the conversation of whoever calls, Hey, Microsoft, what do you want? Right. And like, exactly. and, you just, and you just keep running the football and you look up Microsoft has your company and you got $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me, I gotta ask you some questions. Okay. I sure. gotta ask some follow-up questions. Okay. First of all, man, congratulations, brother. Proud Thank of you, you. dude. I, I love it when people do good, man. And this felt, this made my soul sing when I heard that, man. And uh, I'm just, I, I'm glad to be one one point one oh 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 point one percent of this. I'm happy to be a part of it, dude. I was just going to say, you know, what would have happened? Who knows? But what would have happened had we not talked in the past about different membership bundling options for yeah. the training company? Yeah. And yeah, had I not, real. had I not had that knowledge to transfer over to Refarm Labs when we were losing customers because of the pricing and try and come up with something new. Maybe I would have come up with something completely different, but the fact that we had that conversation, it's like, well, how can I apply that over here? Because this Mm. is the most urgent need. So let's figure this out. And here we are. Oh man. And that, that to me, man, I tell you what that screams to me when I hear you say that. And it's something that we live and die by. That's just the power of community. 
That's not me or you being super geniuses. We've talked off air. We both know that ain't true. We're just out here doing what we do. You know what I mean? Right? Like, and everybody's listening in like, Ooh, what are they going to say next? And I'm like, we don't even know what we're going to say next people, you know, but like being, it's why we, everything we do is so based on community and our business because it's like fellowship, talking, hashing through things, talking about one thing, applying it to another that, that there's just gold there. And that's where every great thing comes from, man. And, uh, it's awesome stuff, dude. I, I appreciate that. I do appreciate the, uh, I'll sure, take my, sure. I'll take, I'll take my humble hat off for a little while. Uh, <laughs> okay. So like I've, I've, I've had a much smaller scale version. Of this happened to me, me and Jocelyn, uh, when we sold our company, uh, in 2017, it was on a contract for 1.1 million. You know, we got a ton of it in cash, like a ridiculous amount in cash. That was life changing. I was a school teacher in Southeast Kentucky, man. I made 30 grand a year, you know? And like, yeah. it was, it just, it was weird. It was just so weird, man. At that point, you know, uh, to do that, like how weird was it? when you're like the deal's done and then the, when the money hits the bank account, that's the day, you know, it's over with or whatever, you know, you get paid the first part. Right. Cause you know that you sign the contract and you're like, are they going to give me the money? And you're waiting yeah. for like a few days, but like, how does it, that's an astronomical amount of money, bro. That's incredible. Like, so like, well, let how me, does let, me feel, let me say know? this. Let me say this first. Me and my partner did not split the 20 million. Okay. Let's let, you know what, what it was North of that, but it was, we didn't split. So we had, not only did we have me and my partner, we had the original investors. We had to raise even more money, you know, after. Oh, I, I, I totally get that. So, I totally, yeah, so yeah. You, you we, didn't, <laughs> put, Terry, Terry didn't pocket 20 mil. I know what you're no, saying, no, but that okay. is, that is a, that is a massive exit. That is a really, yeah. really cool exit. You know? So you, yeah. I mean, you're getting a chunk of change, you know what I mean? It's still yes. life changing yes. money, of yes. course, for everybody. Yes. But yes, you, you are right. So there is that moment when you wake up the next day, the, uh, the uh, escrow service says, you know, we're going to wire the money to the account on this day and you're logging into your fidelity account. Every, hit, refresh, hit refresh, hit refresh, hit <laughs> refresh every time. You know? and, and then it appeared and it was like, actually for an instant, it's like, oh my God, look at the number. But then it was like gone because it was so like anticlimactic because the, the yes. discussions had been going on. The legal stuff had been going on. Papers had been docu-signed for weeks. There's been additional follow-up meetings and everything was you know, since we didn't do any of this in person, it was all, you know, via email and, and, and Zoom meetings. It's super surreal, man. When that, it is. I, it, yeah. Yeah. It, it is. And, and, and so it's like, I looked at my wife, it's like, well, it's over. <laughs> now I have to go work for Microsoft for two years. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Money. We had a 90 day clause and Jocelyn was like, ah, crud. There you go. I, I'll tell you another moment that that happened to me. We were, uh, so we lived in uh, this house I'm actually sitting in right now. It was our, is our office now. It's like our headquarters. So we've got like the living room is like our conference table and there's a print room and then my little, whatever you call this studio or whatever, where I record these podcasts. And we actually, when we sold the business, we're like, let's walk, we're walking down right down to the bank and we're paying this house off right now. Like we're going to write a check and we're going to do it. And I was like, you know, growing up, you're like, man, when you pay your house off, that's the ultimate achievement in life. I mean, oh, yeah. you're, you've done it. You don't have a mortgage if you don't want one and you got, you're good, you know? So we walked in, I had the cashier's check ready to go. And I was just like waiting to slide it over. I'm like, this has got to be a big deal. Like this can't happen all the time. I was waiting for streamers and party. To I thought they were going to, I thought they had a special like cabinet with donuts in them just for moments like this. And they brought them out and gave you some donuts or something. Right. And I, <laughs> uh, I literally wrote, we handed the check over. She printed a receipt, handed it to me and looked behind me and went next. <laughs> It was the most anticlimactic thing ever. And I was just like, okay, that's, that's the game, huh? It's just the next wow. objective, man. You just got it. And like, yeah, that's, that's it. You do have that weird feeling of like, all right, now we got to service the contract, turn it over to them. And what am I going to do with my life at that yeah. point? Like the, yeah. the numbers don't matter at that point. Cause you still got to figure out what you're going to do next. That's all it is, yeah. man. That's actually well, when I came up with my saying, I have a saying that I have a, uh, I tell people all the time now, like they try to come up with like, what's the best thing to do? And I'm like, it's not a, the best decision. It's the next decision. And yeah, and that's, that's what I got out of that whole experience was like, all right, man, the whole game is just what's next. Let's go. Next. Next. <laughs> yeah, she did. And she goes to me, went next. <laughs> so, like, so, right, so you look at your wife and you're like, okay, we got to finish out Microsoft. Do you have a, do yep. you have a non-compete or can you go ahead and start something else if you wanted to, or what can you, you know, do? What's, what's, uh, what, well, we can't, create a new firmware analysis company. So that's that's for sure. But we're free to do other things that don't compete with Microsoft products in general. So I can't cool. go out and build the next Windows or anything like that. Yeah, I can't, um, can't start a cloud storage 
thing. Or yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, honestly, honestly, I, I'm really getting tired of the, the high tech stuff. The yeah, hacking, man. The security, because I've been doing this crap since, you know, before I got arrested at 17. I mean, I've yeah. always been in front of a computer and I, honestly, I kind of have the itch to kind of want to go off the grid for a little bit and just disconnect from everything. I agree, dude. Look That's at what, all that. What do you, uh, so let, let me ask you this because you know we're about to start another membership here, is what we're going to do here. But like, what, what do you love to do outside of tech? Like, what are your hobbies and passions and stuff like that? You know, like, do you, do you think about those things? Like, do you, I got, like, I got two. I got two. I like, right. I like to, I, I like to go backcountry camping. Uh, oh, I've, I've hiked sections of the Appalachian Trail. I've, I've gone, you know, in, in, into the woods and just, you know, pitch a tent in a bare spot and just, you know, hang out there for a while. Uh, I really like, you know, getting away from everybody. I mean, that's the best part because even even if I was connected, uh, once you get so far off the trail, you lose all cell reception. So yeah, they can't you're, find you're you then. To disconnect. Yeah, that's right. Now the, the other thing, this is this is so low tech. It's it's unbelievable. I've I've gotten this into this habit of like. <laughs> Fixing lawnmower engines. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not. Of all the things I could have guessed, man, I wasn't expecting you to say that, dude. But like, just just fixing engines, basically. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah, I, I just don't know what it is. I have like uh, two lawnmowers out in the garage now that need to be fixed. That sounds like a YouTube channel it. right there, man. That's a well. There's a lot of the, people. The, out the there world's most stuff. famous lawn mowing fixing guy. <laughs> Right, you just can't you can't work on Microsoft lawnmowers if they ever come out with their AI lawnmower because you exactly. have to not compete, man. Dude, that's crazy. That, that's what you ought to do, though, man. Like, uh, um, you know, I've been really watching a lot of our people, man. Like, go into these hobby and passion niches, and I just think with the I think the way the world's going with uh, AI technology, a lot of things are going to get replaced over the next fifteen years or so. Um, people's jobs, people's careers that they mm. will not exist you know, soon. I think that's where a lot of people are going to find a lot of success serving others is, yes. uh, is de-stressing, relaxation, helping people to break free of those modern conveniences. Um, I think there's a lot of wiggle room there, man. So you might find, you know, some cool way to lead and do some things like that. And in, in those spaces that you love now, because you've, you, you've got that big payout, you know, so what, your two years, yeah. that what you said you got on the contract. Yep. So they, they, they held back, uh, a portion sure. of the total payout. And, yeah, which is uh, a, hey, let's I, I, let's let's talk about that real quick because I don't think I think people would like to hear about this because, like, talk uh, and maybe you can't. I don't, you don't have to go into a lot of details, but like, how how um, what did you learn about the structuring of the deal? Like, what were some of the interesting things? Like, for one, people are like, "Wait, you sold your company? Why are you working for them?" Right? Like, let's talk. Let's let's go through some different things that we learned about selling businesses. You know? Yeah. So one of the things, and I and. In retrospect, I understand it. It makes sense. Now, our company was very small. I mean, it was uh, seven people. And they, they're they basically buying the people and the knowledge because they're going to take our existing platform and, and basically rewrite it in the Microsoft style sure. and put it in the cloud. <clears throat> so they wanted to maintain – they wanted to make sure that everybody would come on board. So, of course, they, they give you a sweet employment offer. All the employees got sweet employment offers and stock awards and all that kind of stuff. Just, just well, like they the don't want to lose when you sell something at a big level. They don't want to lose the people yep. coming in. So that's the first thing. And, and also, too, you probably want to take care of your people. You don't want to just turn it loose and let them go. Yeah. So, all right. So that's cool. That's interesting. So in order to maintain team cohesion, the CEO and me and the other founder – where we were locked in for two years. Okay. And it makes sense because, you know, you don't want the team to disband. I mean, I've, I've read the stories where, you know, Fortune 500 company buy small startup and the founders take their money and take off and, and leave. And then within a year, the whole team ends up, you know, falls getting, apart. And yeah, falls apart. Gone. And then it's like, you know, what did this big company end up buying? Nothing right. In the end. So I think, you know, they, they've learned their lessons. Uh, so yeah, I'm locked up for two years. Now I can leave. But as part of the enticement, they they hold back what they call the consideration, the payout. Yep. They they kept a chunk of it back. And if you're there for 12 months, they will release 50 percent of it from escrow. And if you stay the full 24 months, they'll release the rest of it at the end of that time. So you so are financially really incentivized to hang around, work with them and make sure that everything that way we buy that point they can transition totally over time and it doesn't disrupt anything, basically. Yes. 
Yes. Interesting. That way they get to hopefully get to see some type of return on their investment as the product gets assimilated into Azure cloud and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So that was, that was kind of a shock to me because I wasn't expecting that, that, you know, the companies would, they actually wanted to keep back a significantly larger portion than we ultimately agreed to. So our law firm argued back saying what you're asking for is out of industry norms. This is more like it. So we kind of met in the middle somewhere and it's like both sides walked away grumpy. So it was a good compromise. That's a good deal. That's always a good deal. Yeah. We (laughs) actually, uh, I think we could have actually sold elementary librarian, uh, dot com for a little more. Uh, we actually had some offers that were interestingly structured that were more than what we sold it for, but like they all, but those all required us to stay on longer and it's a weird thing when you're sitting there talking about the money and stuff, because our goal was to get to flipped lifestyle and only focus on it. So yeah. like, the, you know, those structures of like 90 days versus one year versus two years, like that's an interesting uh, part of the negotiation when you sell a business, because you're sitting there like, I want this gone uh, and I want the money and I want my time back. And like, yeah. but then you're like, nah, but that's not exactly how it, w-. I think people think it's like a yard sale. Like, Hey, well, they bought a business. How about that? No, it is way more integrated, uh, for at least the short term, whenever you uh, do let go of something like that. Also yeah. too, you know, here's what, here's what got us, Terry. And I want to, I want to see what you feel about this. You probably haven't seen it yet because it's been, it's, it's just happened in the near recent past. It's hard to turn the reins over to your baby. It's hard to see some because you know that sooner or later, decisions you would not have made are going to get made about that business, whether it's deconstructed, changed, resold. Uh, so how do, how does that feel? The emotional part of it right now, you know. You know, I I have to, I have to be honest with you. I I don't have that connection to either one of the companies. Oh. I don't know why that that is. I know a lot of you know you watch Shark Tank and all the other shows, and they're like, we're going to give you X amount of money for this much of a percentage, and they're like, hmm, I don't know about that. I'm thinking, do it, man. What's I know, right? Yeah, right, right, right. And um, so what about your partners? Were they upset about it? Were your partners were like, no, ah, no. cool. No, not at all. In fact, you know, I, I <laughs> maybe I didn't I, sell mine for enough. That's why I didn't feel it yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's because you had that extra zero on your sale that I had. That's why I was a little more emotionally attached. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I look at, um, you know, my, my, the training company and the product company, the offensive spooky one, you know, we sold that. And as, as soon as we ink the deal, I already had like, you know, I'm no longer with the company as my autoresponder on the, on the email. I mean, it was just like, I, I cut ties and it was, it was done because I, I don't know. It's like, it's, I've taken it to where I could have taken it over, you know, those, you know, 10, 12, whatever years, let somebody else take it and do what they can with it. Maybe call. they'll do something good better. Call. Now, granted, we do have a clause in that sale because it's an installment sale. The person who bought it couldn't afford you know, even sure. though it was a smaller price compared to say 15 million, which is another a common sale. thing that, uh, that happens. Like a lot of people think that when they, they see these sales for like 10 million or 5 million or whatever, like that's a common thing too, like, like payments and, yes. you know, uh, earned buyouts or earn, or earnouts where like the cus- the company has to continue to perform at a certain rate to get so much out. They don't, they don't just give you the whole amount up front right. when you sell a business. Right. So, yeah, no, well, I mean, in Microsoft's case, yes. Well, but, right. But, yeah, Microsoft that can do it. Other people don't usually do that. Yeah. You know? So we're on the installment sale program. And there is a clause in there that says if the revenue dips below a certain percentage, we have the right to buy it back. Oh, so, interesting. So That's we cool. can go back and, and, and take over the company at a significantly reduced investment if we have to buy it back. But I think it's in good hands. It's going to it's going to be fine. And I expect that we'll end up seeing our our full payout over the next five years or whatever it happens to be. Fascinating, but uh, you know, I'll 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 tell you, uh, I I'm very bitter about Microsoft forcing me to sell that other company because I yeah, mean, you weren't done it, with it yet, maybe right? I wasn't yeah. done, and it was it made consistent money over time. It was always from the day from the first day, it was always profitable. Um, the very first distribution I ever took from that company, I did exactly what you did. I went down to the bank, wrote a check, and paid off the house. Uh, my experience was a little bit better because they said, congratulations on paying off your mortgage. And then they, <laughs> and said, then next. they said next. Right? 
<laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's amazing, dude. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can definitely see that. But it's kind of like, man, those are the decisions. You know, it's, it's like that's that. Uh, so you wanted to be an entrepreneur moment, right? Like you get paid the big bucks when you make the big calls. And sometimes yeah. you do have to make sacrifices to make sure that, you know, you win, the investors win, your, your partners win, your people win. Uh, Microsoft wins, right? And that's just the the call that you. But those skills will translate, man. Like, I, you know, we uh, back in 2018 and 2019, we hosted um, our live. We started having live events, right? Where like flip your life live, right. and um, you know, and we learned so much about the industry, how to lead, uh, how to sell 100, 200 tickets, how to get people in the room, get them to take action. Um, and you know, and after the pandemic, of course, we couldn't have a live event last year. Like, we got thank God we didn't sign any contracts with hotels you know, because they would have never gave her. We heard so many horror stories about people not getting their money back, you know, on those uh, room, you know, those room rates and stuff. But, um, you know, we just this year had this opportunity come up where we are now partnering with a live event company. Um, That's why I'm speaking on stages. That's why we're having, and we're having workshops in different cities around the country. Like we're going to Tampa here for the next couple of weeks, hold workshops. And those skills that I of me running my own events and you doing like those trainings like that, 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 that eventually the cl- clarity can't come now. You can't just sit and just, you got to get out on that tent in the middle of the woods and think about this one. Right. But like, yeah. you're going to, all those skills, you're just going to be able to like, Oh, but I could just do this and it'll be like easy snap to go. And um, so even though you weren't quite done with that company, all that skills are going to get put into something later and it's going to happen so much amazingly faster because you just have all those skills and you'll be, you'll be doing something maybe you're even more passionate about. You know what I mean? I hope so. I, I hope so. Um, what's your wife, what's your wife say? What'd your wife say when you told her you're selling, it was, it was going through. I mean, it was, it was kind of surreal. Yeah. Um, but you know, now that, you know, she's seeing the fidelity account on a daily basis. She's like, why am I working? <laughs> you, yeah. You and then like, me. um, uh, do, uh, like, uh, are you, are you, uh, do you still have your parents? Are they still with us? Are you still, are you still uh, my mom is my dad passed actually during COVID, uh, in October. Oh, sorry, he, man. He I, I hated to even ask that, but no, I was okay. just trying to ask like, what did your mom think? You know what I'm saying? Like, mom, aren't you my glad mom. I was a hacker? My mom is <laughs> aren't you glad I got arrested? What? Oh, she's, she's clueless. clueless she, about she, oh, absolutely. Right, clueless. Right. Has no idea. I don't even know if she knows who Microsoft is. <laughs> it's like, I was just there thinking. I have, my mom can barely use the mouse, so like yeah. I, I, your mom probably is like, "Oh, good job, honey. You sold something. Yeah. That's great." It's a, it's a, oh, did you sell your company? That's good. What are you going to do next? <laughs> oh, that's amazing, man. Awesome stuff, dude. Well, listen, like, dude. I'm not even going to try. We could talk for hours, man. I love hanging out with you and hanging out and talking. And man, I, I'm just so proud of you, dude. And uh, man, I'm so grateful uh, that you let us know what was going on and that you came in the yep. community and inspired everybody and. Um, I'm just always so amazed at what is possible when you just be consistent and prolific and relentless and keep taking that next step. Even if you don't have a plan, even if you don't know what it's going and I will forever hold you up, uh, as an example, (laughs) man, of what is possible, uh, when you just keep doing it, man, just keep doing it. So that's awesome. It's Harry, man. You're a great guy, man. I appreciate you. All right, man. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Wow. What a story, man. Terry Dunlap is an amazing, amazing dude. And man, just to hear him from start to finish, uh, talk about selling his business for $20 million. Imagine what that could do for your family, your family's future, even splitting that amongst the partners. We're talking some generational wealth uh, being built there. And it all happened because Terry just kept making the next decision. He just kept taking the next step. You don't have to have some grand architect plan on what your five year and 10 year goals look like, y'all. You just got to keep taking your God given skills and talents. You got to keep building things. You got to keep doing things. You got to keep putting them out into the marketplace. You got to keep stirring those waters until somebody notices. And all of a sudden, through the power of online business, your life gets changed forever. Man, I'm inspired. I'm excited. I cannot wait. I need to go apply a few of those things that I told Terry on my other podcast so that I can, I need, where's my $20 million exit? That's what I got to figure out next, y'all. We're right there with you and we're trying to grow. We're trying to do it too. Man, I'm glad that we are all on this journey together. So thank you all so much for listening to the Shane Sam show today. Hey, listen, if you love this podcast, if it is important to you, if we're bringing value to your life every single week, could you do me a favor? Go over to Apple Podcasts, leave me a five-star review. Tell me how much you love the show. Tell me who your favorite guest is. I read every single one of those reviews. 
reviews, and I would love to read yours. If this episode fired you up, give it a share on social media or make sure you tell a friend about the Shane Sam Show. And of course, if you need any help starting, building, or growing an online business, scaling that thing up, or maybe even selling it, go check out all the resources that we have available for online entrepreneurs at my personal website, shanesams.com. Dot com. All right, y'all, that's all I've got for this episode of The Shane Sam Show. I'll see you again next week with another amazing guest and another amazing story. Until then, get out there and be consistent. Be prolific. Be relentless. Cast your stone out upon the waters and cause many ripples. I'll see you then. Mm-hmm.